For those serious about audio, I've always recommended staying away from USB microphones, but it's about time that that changed. Welcome to the first official installment of Vox Test, the new adaptation of my microphone review series of sorts to see which microphones can handle an epic voice quite well. Multiple mics will pass this test, but this will still be a formal review, so there will still be negative points to talk about, and there will be microphones that don't pass it. For example, the Electrovoice RE20, RE320, and my Rode Procast are all passed the Vox test, as they were all great to work for YouTube and live streaming broadcasting with a more professional and epic voice style presentation, but the Toner USB microphone that I reviewed did not pass. Full quality samples for every microphone that I review, as always, will be in the description below through SoundCloud, or if you're watching on the website posting, the embed will just be below the video. In this episode, we're taking a look at the SE Electronics X1, or as I like to call it, the Sex One microphone. Ha. Ha. No, never mind. Just the SE X1. I still can't okay this model is a usb microphone which i normally abhor i've never had a good experience with a usb microphone until this one which has completely renewed my faith for 300 dollars, this mic is competing with a selection of very high quality and very prominent microphones so let's see how it holds up in the vox test before we jump into the physical overview, I do want to note that they have like three or four different versions of this microphone on their website. There is an XLR or USB version of the same microphone. The XLR version is actually $100 cheaper, but then there's three different diaphragm types within the microphone itself within the X1 series of microphones. There's a titanium sputtered diaphragm, which is the X1D, a ribbon microphone version, which is the X1R, and then the gold sputtered diaphragm, which is the one I'm using here for the X1 and the X1 USB and one other modification. This is a side address condenser microphone. It's got a very nice wide grill to talk into the beautiful, as it says, gold sputtered diaphragm here in the middle. Comes with a mic stand mount, as you can see here, it screws onto a mic stand or mic arm just fine, just like most microphones. And the USB connection is at the bottom with a standard A to B USB connection. Between these two is the fun part a minus 10 dB switch and a ba low bass cut filter to adapt the microphone for a variety of different environments. And then something else unexpected for normal microphones that I would review on this channel. Being a USB microphone, this microphone also acts as a USB sound card for your computer. As such, you will have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the side for both monitoring your live audio as you record it so that you can hear your levels, hear how you're saying things as such with no delay. And it also works for playback via your computer for say if you're recording in Adobe Audition or Audacity, if you set it as the playback device, then you can make edits and not have to move your headphones from this to an interface to your computer, anything like that. You just play all your computer sounds through here. This is great for game streamers, live streamers, YouTubers, things like that as well, as you can play your game volume through here too. In the middle above the SE logo and X1 USB model identification, you also have a volume up and down rocker for the headphone volume. Now, let's look at a raw audio sample, shall we? I recorded the audio samples using Adobe Audition CC in the ASIO mode for the microphone at 96,000 Hertz. Hello everyone, my name's Adam Repos Vox, and welcome to a microphone test of the SE Electronics USB condenser microphone. This is a test. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. I hit my nose on the pop filter. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Adam, or Epos Vox. I never thought I'd say this about a USB microphone, but this mic is really, really good. Despite running strictly via USB, even from a USB hub at times, this mic sounds great. It sounds natural while still carrying plenty of oomph and bass in response to any crispiness or crunchiness in your voice that you kind of need. In fact, this is one microphone that I could use as my main microphone without doing much processing to it if my environment was more conducive to a condenser microphone. Fun fact that long-term subscribers of the channel will know I actually used a condenser mic, the AT2020, as my main microphone for the channel for a very long time. This makes me almost miss it. A couple of things I do want to note about the mic though. Firstly, my S's, you know, S-E uh, electronics pick up on this mic quite strongly. 
When processing the audio sample for what you'll hear in a moment, I even added a de to my processing chain, and that didn't seem to help much. So if you're using a hard limiter in your audio processing, be very careful, as you might just rip someone's ears out. Instead, I took a slightly different approach with the processing using a different, uh, an alternate method of processing that I do to still provide you with an audio sample close to how I normally process my audio. Some of the S's are sharp, but it's a lot better than it would be with my normal processing chain. Hello everyone, my name's Adam Repos Vox, and welcome to a microphone test of the SE Electronics USB condenser microphone. This is a test. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. I hit my nose on the pop filter. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Adam Oripos Vox. For a full explanation of how I process my audio, check out the video I made on it in the YouTube card icon, I think it's up there, to learn more. Secondly, I want to note that this mic, like many condenser mics, can be a bit quiet if you're not a loud speaker like I am. This is good, as peaking or clipping with a condenser microphone sounds really, really bad. But it can also be bad because for those of you without a sound conditioned room, the more gain or amplification you apply in post, the more background noise or static or hiss is going to pop up in your audio, and you don't want that. And that leads me into my conclusion. Does this mic pass the Vox test? Absolutely, and I've used it in quite a few videos already. A few tutorials, the Hotfix News video or episode 2 both on this channel and the gaming channel, as well as a couple other gameplay commentaries on the gaming channel. Would I recommend this mic to others? Yes, as long as you can compensate for background noise. Recording in a proper studio, utilizing low computer fan speeds and sound foam, or hanging blankets around your recording area, that kind of thing. This mic sounds fantastic even without post-processing, but loud environments will let your listeners hear everything going on around you. So would I currently commit to using this as my main microphone? Well, given that I just invested a bunch of radio equipment for an analog XLR setup, and the fact that I live in an apartment complex that is very, very loud, no. But I would use it if I had a proper recording studio. Absolutely. You will, of course, need a pop filter for this microphone as well, or your p p p plosives will leave someone deaf, like most condenser microphones. For $300, this mic is a little on the pricey side, as the $200 price range for the XLR version is a little more ideal for this package. But they do have to price up for the additional sound card and USB hardware, so you kind of get what you get. If you have an XLR interface and a preamp already, consider picking up the XLR version of this microphone. Those of you looking for cheaper solutions, stay tuned. In the next episode of the Vox Test, I will be covering a great XLR and USB microphone for under $50. Get subscribed for that video with the subscribe button down below. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Consider smashing the like button if you did. Smash it with your microphone if, if you want to get rid of your old microphone and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, my name's been Adam Reeves Vox and I'll catch you in the next one. Product links and SoundCloud links, as always, will be in the description below. Thank you for watching.